Welcome back to the Wizard Shop and EuroAsian Bob strikes again for like the 3,000th time. I don't know how in the world he keeps doing this stuff. You guys have seen this in the background, let's take a look at it. So this is a gray 1985 Mercedes 500 SEL. No, I know it looks blue. I'm talking about gray as in gray market. Actually, Hoovy has a 500 SL. That was his grandma's from years ago. It was imported through the gray market. There was a period in time that you could get a vehicle from England or Germany or something imported, and it was kind of legal, but it kind of wasn't legal. It was the gray market where the vehicles could be pulled over to the United States given all the information or the emissions sticker under the hood. But that came to an end pretty fast. They were like, no more. This was right at the end of that. This is a gray market blue 500 SEL, and it is beautiful. So kind of the story that I heard from EuroAsian Bob that this was owned by a diplomat or an ambassador or something. They had it ordered and brought over. They don't know exact details. We do have a name we'll show you here in a minute on a sticker or decal that's on the door jam. But let's take a look at this thing. So one thing we do notice right off the bat is it doesn't have the park bench for a front bumper like the 80s Mercedes did that were sold meant to be for the United States. You can't have a seat on the bumper because it's very small. It also has the Euro headlamps on it. They're not the ugly rectangle 1980s headlamps that fit on Chevys and Fords and Dodges and Mercedes and it didn't matter. They just all used this ugly rectangle headlamp. These are actual Euro ones. Isn't it a pretty color blue, Mrs. Wizard? It is absolutely gorgeous. What would you call that? Cerulean? Kind of like a cobalt bill. It's really, really amazingly beautiful. Kind of looks like the color of the ocean when you're sailing out on a cruise ship or something. You're just dreaming of the yacht. Yeah. Has a nice set of tires on it, some hand-cooked tires. It does have the bunt wheels, is what they call them. It looks like a bunt pan that you cook bunt cakes with. Obviously it's not, it's a wheel. The cladding is all intact along the bottom. There's no dents or cave-ins or rust spots on the car. And we can see it's a 500 SEL Mercedes. And again, we don't have a bumper that sticks out six feet from the back of the car. It's very slim and trim like they are over in Europe. Here's our boot or trunk. Even the carpet is very clean and nice in very good shape. Looks like a little bag full of documents or something there being stored. Here's our safety warning triangle. Everything's intact. A lot of these things I've found with 80s Mercedes is they're supposed to have a first aid kit and they're usually missing. The safety triangle is usually missing. So many things are usually missing, but this one seems to be pretty well intact. There's our spare tire. It looks like it could use some air. We'll throw some air in it before it leaves. I'm not too sure if that's original or not. It's a Yokohama Avid. So there's our trunk. Everything looks tidy in there. There's some tiny little scratches here. It looks like over the years they've tried to touch it up or whatnot. But that's to be expected with a car of this age. All the chrome flares are in good shape. Again, the cladding is in good shape on the side. One thing I like the look of this car, it's a long, streamlined, straight line. It's, it almost looks like an old Cadillac, but it's not a Cadillac. It's much better. Let's go ahead and open the hood. So this thing's going to stick its tongue out and allow us to open the bonnet or the hood right here. Watch this. Bleh. There's its tongue. There we go. There's our 5 liter V8 with Bosch Jetronic controls on it. That's the fuel injection system that it has. This is old enough that it still has a distributor. Pretty powerful V8. These were very good engines, whether it be the 380, the 500, the 560, any of those. There's a 
these are really, really good engines. It did originally have an issue with the idle surging or hunting. We ended up finding that the idle control module just had some circuit board issues. We resoldered the little pins and it came back to life and idles perfect now. It even has the CAD plating on all the hoses, Mrs. Wizard. Wow. It is in very, very good shape. All the hoses, everything is clean on this engine. It's not leaking or dripping all over the place. It's very similar to when you open the hood when it was new. Like I said, all the CAD plating and stuff is still intact. Not many of these left that are this clean and this nice. Let's go ahead and do an interior tour with Mrs. Wizard. So ladies and gents, as we always, we start here at the gauge cluster and you are seeing that correct. It says 89,000 miles. That's all that's on this thing. That's hardly anything for the age this car is. As you can see, it does have just classic Mercedes gauges. The temperature gauge is in centigrade. And many cars, you know, we get today, we have the option of making it in Fahrenheit or Celsius. No option here. So you're gonna have to do some conversions off there in there if you really wanted to know the temperature of the engine. However, obviously red still means, you know, turn it off. As we move up, look at that dash. You can tell. The age of this shows she has lived in a garage her entire life. The wood is in amazing condition. No cracks. So many of them at this time have cracks in them. Maybe a small little blemish here or there, but nothing, nothing major. It did look like they had something attached on the dash. Not sure what that would have been. But there is a, appears to be a washer glued to it. I wouldn't remove it because it probably would damage the wood behind it. But it looks like it could be a good place to, you know, put your cell phone if you need a place to store that and keep it mounted. It does have a standard classic Mercedes radio. Not sure what the code there is, but there is something taped there just in case, you know, the driver needed that. Again, more wood trim, and you can see on my side the seats were covered. But on the rest, not leather. No, this is not leather. This is a velour. This thing is an absolute sofa going down the road. And there's no wear or tear. There's no spots where the velour is coming off. It is in pristine condition. But with 89,000 miles over all these years, you wouldn't expect there to be much, you know, worn away. Back seat, lovely bench seat back there. And if we look in the back window, there are spots that the safety and other things can be stored back in those little spots back there and again the back deck looks great as well as we move up to the headliner there's no marks there's no sagging not so much as a fingerprint do have leather trim up on the top next to our visors and on our down posts and a little bit here on the door but more of that velour on the door panels as well Otherwise, this thing is really, really amazing. It's like a time capsule. I feel like I'm back to being a kid again in my grandpa's car, but his wasn't even this nice. This is amazing. Let's get this up in the air. One thing I wanted to show you guys before we get it up in the air is that actually the import decal here on the door jam. It's very interesting. It's kind of hard to make out, but you can see that it says Mercedes-Benz 500 SEL, Daimler-Benz, Stuttgart, West Germany, imported by Harold Vickers. So Harold Vickers was the guy responsible for getting this thing brought over to the United States in May of 1985. That was a gray market sticker. Hoovy's 500 SL, that was his grandmother's, also has a very similar decal or sticker. All right, well, let's get this thing up in the air. Wow, you can't buy a car anymore that closes the door like that. Not when they're made out of plastic like they are today. Starts right up. Perfect smooth idle. All right, let's check the bottom of this out. Everything's looking pretty clean under here. We'll move towards the back. I don't see any radiator leaks going on. Brake pads are like 90%. They're still good. Nothing loose there. 
can look up in here and see that our oil pan is dry. Everything's looking pretty good there. The side of the engine is nice and dry. Go over here. Brakes are good. Nothing loose there. These old strut rod bushings are here. Usually something that fails on these cars, but these ones are really nice. Everything's looking good. Our uh, steering dampener is in good shape. Here's our transmission, nice and dry. No leaking pan there. Nothing coming from the rear main seal or the transmission input seal there. Our flex discs on the drive shaft here actually look pretty good. So Wizard, what about the uh, motor mounts? Let's check those. They always seem to go bad on Mercedes. They're not flat, they look pretty good. We do need to check the transmission mount. And it's still got some life left in it, it's still holding up pretty good. Here's our exhaust with a catalytic converter. It does have a little bit of a rust issue here on the exhaust. Nothing too bad, a little tiny hole. There's some resonator chambers. Here's our flex disc here on the back. Everything looks good there. Our differential's nice and dry. The CV boots are good. They're not slinging grease everywhere. The shocks are not blown out. Here's our fuel pump and fuel filter. Makes it very easy to replace when they go out, but everything's working great there. You can see our CV boots here are not torn. The shock is not blown out. And the brakes are about 80% on the back. Everything looks pretty clean under here. A nice shiny muffler. Let's check the tires here. They look fairly new. 2021. They're this year, so yes, they are good. Let's go ahead and get this thing on the ground. So all in all, this thing is in very good shape. It's very amazing. I come across these once a while on Facebook Marketplace, and ones that are in fair condition, they're still seven or eight grand. You're not gonna get this car for that cheap. You're not gonna go to Eurasian Bob and say, hey bro, I saw one just like this for 3,500 on Facebook Marketplace. No, this is not a $3,500 car. I don't know exactly what he wants. You'll have to contact him. And there is a link in the description below to get a hold of Eurasian Bob. You can discuss the price or any questions you have about the car through that link. But as you saw, it's in very good shape. Now, does this video serve as a legal pre-purchase inspection? No, it does not. We did a very quick glance over just to show you guys, just to get a general idea how nice it is. This is not a pre-purchase inspection. I actually had a customer get upset with me because they purchased a vehicle from EuroAsian Bob. They just watched the video and took that as a pre-purchase inspection. There was one small issue he had, something that wasn't caught in the video. Really what the customer should have done is contacted EuroAsian Bob and pay my shop for a full-on pre-purchase inspection. We'd be happy to do that for you. But this is not what this video is. It is not a pre-purchase inspection. This is a car review. This is to show you how, look at it, it's so nice. But does it guarantee anything about the car? No. Eurasian Bob is actually one of our customers. He brought it here to have the idle issue fixed and we got that taken care of. We did see the issue on the exhaust. We are not an exhaust shop. We're not gonna repair that here. That's something he'll probably get that taken care of before it goes. But that's just a reminder to keep in mind that although it's a beautiful vehicle, I have yet to come across any 30 or 40 year old car that's absolutely perfect, flawless, that you can drive from Canada to South America with no trouble. You're probably going to have trouble on any car that old. I definitely wanted to show you guys this car when EuroAsian brings these cars that are like rare diamonds that you don't see every day. They're just so nice. 
You guys have seen it in the background, and I definitely knew you guys wanted to see a video on it. I love these W126 chassis cars. And just like Mrs. Wizard annotated in her interior review, it does not have MB techs or leather. It's velour. It's, I don't know if that's a rare option, but I have never seen a W126 with velour seats. That's really strange. It's something very rare here in America anyway. So if you're curious what kind of tools we used to work on this beautiful W126, and it is beautiful, it is very beautiful. Check my Amazon affiliates link in the description below. Also EuroAsian Bob's link is in the description below if you want to contact them about this car. Make sure to hit the subscribe button because there's so many more videos to come. Thanks for watching.